Uh, I came across Magic City just by, I believe, just Googling something. It came up, and I was initially um, a bit confused by it because it has this sort of hallmark of a, a theme park like Disneyland or Disney World where they clearly have sort of copied the castle there. And yet, you know, it wasn't really clear. Like, they didn't have any admission price or anything like that. They go over some of the, the features that they have, like a fountain with 80, 500 square meter fountain. Um, and I love, I love how they modern rides from Italy and Germany, um, as if we're all familiar with, with these, the manufacturing countries of these rides and, um, you know, the size being how many hectares and stuff like, I, I don't even know how big a hectare is to be honest. I, I don't know how we can relate to it. So I was a little intrigued by it. Um, and so I, I went there and I saw what it was about and it, it's actually kind of interesting. I think, um, you know, more places should do this. I still have questions, but uh nonetheless it's pretty straightforward it's 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 really just a place with shopping and you know video games and bowling and stuff like that and you'll see what i mean more specifically as, as i go through the, the video so regarding the location of magic city um i just got this map from wikipedia and it's a good map because it not only has the subway overlaying the actual map of the the city it uses both the russian um, and Uzbek terms for each of the stops because they can be they interchange depending on you know what you're looking at. Um, and, and I'm not going to try to pronounce any of these. I, I don't speak those languages, and, and I would just do a horrible job. But you can see on the map here, your best bet is to go to this subway station, and then it's about a 15 minute walk um, to where it is. Also, as a side note, there is um, a big square here that's sort of popular on weekends, and they have a huge flag. That um, it, I thought it was quite a massive flag, but it turns out it's like half the size of the world's largest flag. But it's it's impressive nonetheless. Uh, after hitting up the square, uh, so like I said, it's a fifteen minute walk, um, and for those who are driving, uh, you can there is parking there. I don't know if it costs anything. Um, but it is right next to Magic City. It seems like a pretty pretty popular uh, idea for, for a lot of people. So essentially, it's, it's an outdoor mall. Um, it, it has all the traits of, a, of an actual mall, but of course, it's, out, it's outdoors. Um, it's in this sort of enclosed space. Uh, it is absolutely free to, to go, uh, which was sort of my initial question that I had. Um, and it, I imagine these stores, I, I don't recognize all these stores, um, but I imagine they're sort of higher end stores. Uh, the few things that I were familiar with, like food and drinks and stuff like that, the prices were all pretty similar, pretty reasonable. Um, but they, they, obviously there's this whole sort of theme that, that sort of is a bit of a knockoff of Disney and whatnot. Uh, and, and all the stores sort of have that sort of theme on the outside, but they can vary. There's clothing stores and candy stores and, and other stuff like that. And then there's, of course, like archery um, and other games like they have multiple of the same sort of game, like where you can shoot targets with like a pellet gun and uh, pop balloons with a dart and whatnot. Um, and then there is that movie theater and they play. Uh, honestly, it, 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 I don't recognize some of the titles. I'm not a big movie fan. Um, but they do seem to either be in Russian or with Russian subtitles or what have you. Uh, the archery is one thing I did try uh, with mixed success. And I think it was like 2 or $3 US. I think the price changed when they learned that I was a tourist or something. Because I swear she had said that it was 20, no sorry, yeah 20,000 um, SOM and then it was like 30. Okay. Um, but anyway, it's kind of fun. I haven't done that sort of thing in a while. Uh, there is an indoor aspect with this huge building, and basically uh, it has all sorts of activities. Like I said, it's very similar to um, a mall where they always seem to combine these things in these new malls where they have rides and they have like a sort of play place for, for kids where there's foam and things to climb on and trampolines and stuff like that. Um, and then you, you know, like all this is free as well, like as in to enter, it's free. And then you pay anywhere between like the equivalent of about a dollar or three dollars for, for all the rides or, or games, what have you. Um, I, I went 
for, for some of this footage, I think it was still morning on a Friday. So I, I imagine it, it's busier like on the weekend or in the evening or something like that. Um, but there's multiple levels. So this is where the, the, the rides are on the first level. And then when you go up on to the third level, there is the movie theater and uh, there's also bowling as well. And the bowling was pretty reasonably priced. Uh, I, I looked at bowling at another place and it was like about 50% more, but the bowling here was anywhere between like the equivalent of like eight and $12 per lane per hour. And it includes shoes. I, I know one thing that I get annoyed with back in Canada is they keep charging like $4 for shoes at these places. Uh, but no, here it's included. And they even give you disposable socks too, um, if that's your thing. Uh, another main attraction um, is the aquarium. Um, I did do the aquarium, it was a hundred thousand som for like an adult, uh, which is about ten dollars. Uh, I would say it's a pretty standard aquarium, it's nothing mind-blowing. Uh, they had different fish from the local region as well as around the world. Uh, it, it seems obviously very, you know, like the rest of the place, it's, it's fairly newly built. Uh, everything is in English, Russian, and Uzbek, uh, so that was really good for me because even the subway and stuff like that is just such a mix of like inconsistent amounts of English. But they had everything there was was in was in English as well, so it, it was I don't know it was worth it. It was about 40, 45 minutes, um, but it, you know obviously pretty inexpensive as far as Koreans go. So all in all, I'd say that uh, Magic City is a pretty interesting modern place to go to. Uh, and, and just like any other sort of mall, there's a basically a heavy emphasis on aesthetics and making things look nice and fun. Um, and then there's this typical sort of thing that I would see in Tashkent a lot is, is where they combine shopping and food and entertainment, especially for children, um, all into one sort of thing. And you're sort of seeing the same sort of... Um, uh, same sort of ideas for entertainment w with games and, and small rides and stuff like that. Uh, but I, I don't know. It, to me, it was kind of interesting. Uh, you know, uh, I, I think it was the effort they put into making it look nice and new and, and finished and whatnot was, was appreciated. Uh, it's a nice modern sort of place to visit in a, in a city that has uh, an overwhelming sort of Soviet feel to it in, in many neighborhoods. So... I don't know. I think it was fun. It's free. If you don't want to do anything, by all means, just look around. Uh, if you do, you can spend some money and, and play some games and go on some rides. Now, if you're in the neighborhood of Magic City, um, within a short walk, like 10 or 15 minutes, um, if you continue further south on the same street that Magic City's on, is a big shopping mall called Next. And uh, I, I went there to grab something to eat. Um, the food court is similar to like there's a handful I'd say maybe three or four large shopping malls in Tashkent and they're all fairly modern um, this one actually had like a system where you you could go and sit down and your order would come up on a screen and, and whatnot and they have a variety of you know the same old sort of typical things you can get like pizza and hamburgers and kebabs uh, this one actually had Mexican food and you could see it, it, previously there was a gentleman with a sombrero and that's what I got. It, it was okay. Um, and he spoke very good English. I always find the people here are super helpful. Uh, he, he spoke, I, I suppose I would say, um, a more comprehensive amount of English and he was able to explain basically the whole menu to me. Uh, but that that's about as best as I've seen in Tashkent. Um, the, the amount of English isn't um, great, to say the least. Uh, but, you know, I'm rather humble in that I only speak English. I don't have high expectations. But nonetheless, anyway, this, this mall also has the same sort of thing where you have a movie theater, you've got rides, and uh, you have... Uh, you know, high-end sort of stores because it's a newer place. You also have smaller kiosks where often people are sort of killing time and looking at their phone and stuff like that. Um, you also have a lot of security. One of the things in every mall that I had gone to, there's a metal detector. And often the metal detector would go off 
and then nothing would happen. The, the people would just keep walking and no one would do anything. I think in this mall they actually checked my bag, but they did it in such a um, sort of basic manner that it didn't seem very effective. Uh, but on a sort of a side note, there are a, a lot of people in these sort of authoritarian roles, like uh, most intersections that are large, they'll have someone who's watching traffic and, you know, yelling at pedestrians and stuff like that. And, you know, at shopping mall, at any building larger than a postage stamp, any government building, there's going to be somebody there who is a security guard of some sort or law enforcement of some sort or someone wearing fatigues. They, they, they seem to run some sort of a tight ship here, um, which I don't know, some people might find comforting and other people might find a bit authoritarian. But on the, the subject of this mall, like I said, it's, it's similar to other malls. Um, there, there are another, like there, there are a number of high-end sort of seeming brands here um, and a, a number of services as well that, that are sort of combined into the same sort of building. Uh, so last thing I wanted to mention is right behind uh, the mall, the next mall, is a place called Ice City. And as another topic, they, they do have rides behind the mall as well. Um, and the same sort of games. I, I recall seeing a game where you punch a punching bag once to see how hard you can punch it. And I saw it in every city I went to in both Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan. Uh, I don't know, apparently it's a popular one. But anyway, Ice City is a place where uh, basically it's a number of sort of winter activities and sports that you can do. Uh, it costs about 5,000 SOM to get in, which is about 50 cents. And then everything else you just pay for in addition to that. And they're all about like a dollar to three dollars, like 10,000 to 30,000 SOM. Um, and they got a lot of interesting things, again, with the rides, um, which could be anywhere. But the, the main attractions are like the ice rink. There's slides you do on a big tube. There's slides you do on a smaller tube. Uh, and then there's, you can do skating on a track, almost like you might see like a lazy river at a uh, water park. Uh, they did have some sort of aerial tram thing that wasn't operating. I don't know if it wasn't operating because people just didn't want to do it or if there was something wrong with it. Um, and then they have, uh, one of the things I was looking forward to, they said you could have a snowball fight. And I did find the location where that happens and they're basically, it's, it's a big room where they're making a ton of snow, but nobody was interested, I think, because like it's March and, and it was reasonably warm out and people are sort of arriving with uh, shoes and, and a jacket and stuff like that and, and to get into a full-fledged snowball fight would maybe require more outdoor wear than it does to say ski or go down a slide in a, in a room where the temperature is probably around five degrees or something like that because it is obviously like any ice rink it's it's cooler than room temperature but yet not you know not very cold at all but it's a pretty elaborate setup where they have, you know, they've decorated it with lights and, and you know, these sort of bridges and stuff like that. Um, and, and there is a number of activities to do. And, and of course, same thing, you, you can get like the same sort of cotton candy, popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs that you can basically get throughout the whole city. Um, but, it, you know, again, I like the idea that you can just sort of go there and not have to pay to get in or, or sorry not pay very much to get in um, because if you're someone who's just not participating very much in, in the activities then you know you don't really want to pay a huge cover fee um, and I was impressed it's a pretty large facility and um, and I, I really haven't seen anything like it in, in Canada or the, or the United States and and for them to do something like this I thought it was, I thought it was pretty cool.
Anyway, um, that's my conclusion on Magic City. Next, the, the mall and Ice City uh, in Tashkent. I'm by no means an expert, but I did create some other videos from my trip there. Um, hopefully they'll be helpful for people like myself who uh, was looking for answers when I was deciding to go there. Or, and maybe hopefully it'll be helpful in deciding if you want to go there. I think uh, Uzbekistan is a fun place to visit and I, I would encourage you to, to look into it yourself.